probably doesn't surprise you to hear that I have a lot of vintage food ads that pop up in my Instagram and Pinterest feeds. Like this one. This is for a snack called hopscotch. The ingredients are butterscotch chips, peanut butter, chow mein noodles, and marshmallows, mini marshmallows. I love the combination of peanut butter and butterscotch. If you haven't tried it, please do, please do. You will be surprised. Also, the chow mein noodles. I have a story about the chow mein noodles I don't know if I've shared. My dad actually worked at the Latoy factory, which is in my hometown. And on the days that they made these noodles, the entire town smelled toasty and delicious. It was so pleasant and I have such fond memories. So when I saw that this recipe involved these noodles, I had to try it. Have you tried this recipe before? And do you call it hopscotch? Do you call it something else? I'd love to hear about that. So please do leave me a comment. So I have a little bit of water in this pan and I'm gonna go ahead and warm that up. You don't want this water to be boiling. You just want it to be hot. Basically I'm building myself a double boiler. So once you have your water all simmering, I'm gonna add one cup of butterscotch morsels. These smell so good. And half a cup of peanut butter. I use these for my Instant Pot, but honestly I use them a lot for other things. They're just like nice and grabby. So if I'm working with like a metal bowl that's getting very hot, it's just so helpful. So we just have to wait for this to melt now. I've been collecting a lot of vintage ads lately. Some not so weird, some very weird. So I think I'm gonna start incorporating more of those into my weekly videos. I'm gonna pop these open while I'm waiting for that to melt. <laughs> I probably held that against my mic, didn't I? Oh. Yep, I definitely remember this smell. I'm gonna try one. These are so good just to eat, really, but also on top of salads. We almost always had these in our pantry growing up. Look at that. Yeah, that is getting nice and soft. I can't stop eating these. I feel like I could turn the heat off on this and just kind of let the residual heat melt the rest. These are, it's almost melted, see? It looks kind of like cheese, but it's not. That would be an interesting surprise to dip tortilla chips in this. Actually, it could be good. I can see the sweet and salty thing kind of kind of working. Okay, I think we're melted. And then to that, I'm adding two cups of the chow mein noodles. So one, two cups right there. Okay, stir that together. And we have, whoops, mini marshmallows going in now. I think we're pretty much there. Everything is, is fairly evenly coated, which is what you want. That is what we got. Now I have to scoop this onto, you can use wax paper. I'm gonna use a reusable baking mat. And then we get to chill them and eat them. The best part. So now that we have our magical mixture here, the recipe says to scoop it by the teaspoonful onto wax paper because in 1962, that's what you had, not silicone baking mats, but I, that's what I'm using. I also went ahead and I just stuck this tray into the fridge. Get it nice and cold before I even started because I would very much like to eat these as soon as possible. And we have to wait for them to set up. So that was kind of the idea behind that. Not absolutely necessary, not even listed in the recipe, uh, but you know, innovation. These are hard <laughs> to scoop. These noodles, they really just like have an, a mind of their own. This is kind of a big spoon. I'm gonna grab a smaller spoon and see if I'm more successful. I have this like kind of soupy soup spoon. I think it's for like a sugar, sugar bowl. That's what I'm trying to say. It's for a sugar bowl. Actually, that seems, seems to be working pretty well. Supposedly this recipe makes 30, so I might need to get out another sheet tray. I think there's like a recipe for bird's nests that you make around Easter and put like jelly beans. I think this is kind of similar, at least with the chow mein noodles. I think there's like a different, maybe a different base that you use that's not peanut butter. That's just gonna have a lot of marshmallows in it. The spatula helps. I would recommend a spoon and a spatula for this process. One, two, three, four, five, six, I have seven. I have seven done. I, If this recipe is accurate in the amount, I have 23 more to go.
Well, I have one sheet tray done. I'm gonna pop this in the refrigerator and start on another sheet tray and I will be back in a little bit. Can't wait to try these. They look interesting, but they smell amazing. These are, wow, they're falling off. <laughs> Got a little enthusiastic. These are all set. It did not take long, maybe like 20 to 25 minutes in the fridge. Not sure if maybe that was just because I had the already cold sheet pan or what, but I'm so ready to try these. They smell so good. I think you have to be a little bit careful getting them off of this. You don't wanna to be too forceful. I just kind of gently pulled this back. You can see they're kind of flat on the bottom. How am I gonna attack this? <laughs> it's got like little tentacles kind of sticking out. Mmm, it's super good. A lot of things texturally that are happening here. Crispy noodles, soft, pillowy marshmallows, the sweetness from the butterscotch, kind of the, the almost saltiness of the peanut butter and the savory of these noodles. It's like all the sensations all at once. This all comes together to make a really, really good combo. Super easy to make. I'm gonna make these again for sure. Would recommend, absolutely. If you happen to enjoy vintage desserts as much as I do, I have an entire playlist and I will link it in the description down below. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel by clicking on the red button below. I post videos about food, vintage cookbooks, and retro recipes every week. Thanks again, and I will see you in my next video. Bye.